Charles Wesley at his best with the Second Adam Doctrine. And our closing hymn will also be Charles Wesley, the senior choir, over for a thousand towns to sing. The great reformer presenting the gospel in song. Just two announcements before we go any further. First of all, we would like to welcome our newest married couple, brother and sister Samuel, brother and sister Herbert Bonus. Glad to have you. God bless you. Second announcement, there'll be no service here tomorrow evening, no Sunday evening service tomorrow, remember that. Good to see you all as we continue Peter's letter. We've gone through faith, and we have now come to virtue. So I hope you continue to follow. You heard this morning an appeal to study the word carefully, go over what we are doing. Of course, by, by the time we come to knowledge, I will switch from PowerPoint to handout because uh, we have some messages in the knowledge that I want you to particularly go over. Today we are at virtue part one. We also welcome uh, the family of Brother John Eric, who are in for his day tomorrow. Sister Shanna and her husband and the little ones, welcome back to Barbados. God bless you. Welcome to all of our visitors. Welcome to all who are visiting for the first time or who are here for a return visit. May God bless you as we study. We are in Peter's Ladder. This series is Peter's Ladder. We are climbing it. We have finished faith. I hope you know the ladder. Faith, virtue, continue. Faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, hupomino, godliness, brotherly kindness, agape, love, maturity. We've arrived today at virtue. We have two sessions in virtue. Virtue, part one today. Let us simply seek the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the second Adam from above, the image of the first to efface and to stamp thine image in us afresh through the Holy Spirit. Grant that as we continue our climb of Peter's ladder, that as we learn, we will also experience by that faith which surrenders all to allow your Holy Spirit to reproduce the victory of Adam number two, in our minds. Bless us as we study. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we have virtue, the second round of the ladder, or the first edition. Uh, second round or first edition because we are told to add to faith virtue. So I want you to follow carefully. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 reads thus, and you can read it with me. And beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. In this verse, the Greek word translated virtue is the word arite, virtue, arite in the Greek. Now this Greek word arite means...
The Greek word arete means moral excellence, integrity, goodness, virtue, excellence, spiritual strength. In Philippians 4, 8, when the Apostle Paul says, whatsoever things are pure and holy and noble and good, think of these things. The word translated virtue there is also arete. Furthermore, a better translation of 2 Peter 1.5 is this, from the today's English version. In your faith, supply virtue. The word add in the King James Version is translated from the Greek word epikorigio, which properly means to lead up to or to lead us up to. Work out what God works in. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That's Philippians 2, 12 and 13. God works in and we work out. God has given us all that we spiritually need in Christ. That's the gospel. The Holy Spirit reproduces or works into us all that God has already given to us in Christ. And we are to work out our own salvation. As we work out in supplying or leading up or adding, the Holy Spirit multiplies the inworking. You got that point? As we submit in faith and obey and share our faith, the Holy Spirit in multiplies the, the input or the reproduction into us. That's the circle of beneficence. So you find that when you explain things to people, when you share your faith with others, you learn better what you were studying. In other words, since God is powerfully at work in the believer, the believer should make every effort, that's what the word diligence means, to make progress in climbing the ladder. And this effort should be a willing, joyful, enthusiastic effort because it is inspired by the love of God in the Holy Spirit. The exercise of faith. Two quotations, look at them carefully. We cannot have a healthy Christian experience. We cannot obey the gospel unto salvation until the science of faith is better understood and until more faith is exercised. You got that one? We cannot have a healthy Christian experience. We cannot obey the gospel unto salvation until the science of faith is better understood and until more faith is exercised. Let's put it with this one now. That was Review and Herald, October 18, 1898. This is Review and Herald, February 16, 1892. No man can have a sound, healthful experience unless he shall practice the instruction that Christ has given through the Apostle Peter. Put the two of them together and meditate on them. Look at them, read them, and think about them. One says, we cannot have a healthy Christian experience until more faith is exercised. The other one says, we cannot have a healthy Christian experience Unless we practice the instruction given in Second Peter chapter 1. What does that mean? By putting these two statements together, we can safely conclude that the practice of the instruction in Second Peter 1, that is climbing Peter's ladder, is the practical experience of the science of faith. Because both are equal. Adding diligently. The faith of Jesus won the victory over all satanic temptations for us. Praise the Lord. Our faith in him receives the victory. Hallelujah. Remember that all that Christ has done for us is in his word. We receive the victory by receiving his word. We add virtue to faith by faith. Praise the Lord. All in the word. Christ's victory is ours. In our own strength, it is impossible for us to deny the clamors of our fallen nature. Through this channel, our fallen nature, Satan will bring temptation upon us, 
Christ knew that the enemy would come to every human being to take advantage of hereditary weakness and by his false insinuations to ensnare all whose trust is not in God. And by passing over the ground which man must travel, our Lord has prepared the way for us to overcome. It is not his will that we should be placed at a disadvantage in the conflict with Satan. He would not have us intimidated and discouraged by the assaults of the serpent. Praise the Lord. Jesus would not have us to be discouraged or intimidated by the devil. Be of good cheer, he says. I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Hallelujah. So he's overcome for us. And his victory is ours. Praise the Lord. Let him who is struggling against the power of appetite look to the Savior in the wilderness of temptation. See him in his agony upon the cross as he exclaimed, I thirst. He has endured all that it is possible for us to bear. His victory is ours. Jesus rested upon the wisdom and strength of his heavenly father. Notice that. He rested. He submitted to. He surrendered all. He just surrendered himself to his father. He declares the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I be, shall I not be confounded. And I know that I shall not be ashamed. That's the faith of Jesus. A complete faith in his father to save him from satanic onslaught and therefore to save us in him. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Pointing to his own example, he says to us, Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. That word stay I am told, is the Hebrew equivalent of the Greek word we looked at already and we'll look at again, hupo mino, absolute submission and staying under God's love and God's will. That's Isaiah 57 to 10. The prince of this world come of self Jesus and have nothing in me, John 14, 30. There was in him nothing that responded to Satan's sophistry. He did not consent to sin. Not even by a thought did Jesus yield to temptation. So it may be with us. So that's the completeness of the victory we have in Jesus. That's the completeness of the victory we have in him. Christ's humanity was united with divinity. He was fitted for the conflict by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And he came to make us partakers of the divine nature. Listen to this now. So long as we are united to him by faith, sin has no more dominion over us. Praise the Lord. It's when we break the union that we fall. God reaches for the hand of faith in us to direct it to lay fast hold upon the divinity of Christ that we may attain to perfection of character. And how is this accomplished? Christ has shown us. All of this is from the Zara of Ages. By what means did he overcome in the conflict with Satan? By the word of God. Only by the word could he resist temptation. It is written, he said, and unto us are given exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. 2 Peter 1, 4. So this undergirds, re-emphasizes the importance of our studying the word of God. Satan presents a thousand topics to attract our attention. But we have to have the word of God as our number one priority. Studying and praying. Studying and praying revising and going over. And the appeal was made this morning in the lesson study on a whole that we, as a people, talk a lot about the truth, but we must be able to know it 
experientially and to be able to prove it from the word of God. Because in the final crisis, every point of our doctrines is going to be picked at by the lawyers of Babylon. And if we are not sure that we are sure of the third angel's message and true Seventh-day Adventism, we will collapse under the pressure. So the quotation continues from the Zerah of Ages. Every promise in God's word is? Every promise in God's word is? Some people didn't answer. Every promise in God's word is? Ours. You know, we, we, we have an illustration of land. A man had some land there in Barbados, a good set of land, seven acres. He had paid for the land, just as Jesus had paid for all of us, the redemption price. But all he did was to pay for the land. He did nothing with the land. And some people moved on that spot of land and lived there for seven years. And another seven. And when the man went to move him off the land, he had to pay them so much money that it was easier to give them the land. So if Jesus has paid for our redemption and we do not experience it, Satan will come back in and occupy it twice fold. So the, the word is ours. Don't let it only be legally. Let it be experientially to study, to believe, to submit, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, obey that word. So we continue, by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God are we to live. When assailed by temptation, look not to circumstances or to the weakness of self, but to the power of the word. Because the power of the word is the power of Christ in that word brought to us by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. All its strength is yours. Hallelujah. So all that Christ has done for us is encoded in his word. That's why Jesus says, the word I speak unto you, that is spirit and that is life. All its strength is yours. Thy word, says the psalmist, have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. By the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Psalm 119, 11, Psalm 17, verse 4, all from the of ages, 1, 2, 3 promises of victory. So let's look at some of these promises of victory that enable us to be a rite, that is, morally strong, virtuous, to add virtue. And we can repeat this together. Let's go, 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 2.14 Now thanks be unto God who always causeth us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place. We should, we should make this true of ourselves that wherever we go, the knowledge of God is shed abroad as an influence by our exhibiting the agape love by remaining surrendered to Christ so his spirit reflects that love through us. Praise the Lord. Another promise. 1 Corinthians 2.14, let's read it. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted, Above all that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. And that way of escape is always the faith in Jesus which surrenders all to receive from the faith of Jesus the victory already worked out for us. It requires our decision, our willpower in terms of choosing to decide to submit and to exert all the willpower we have to submit. And God supplies the victory. We cannot experience salvation without our cooperation to believe, to choose, to decide, and to submit. 
2 Peter 2 9, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the, the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So the Lord knows how to deliver us from our temptations, trials, and difficulties. He knows. He knows. Praise the Lord. And we simply submit. As one surgeon told us one day in medical school, he was a brilliant surgeon. He says, as brilliant a surgeon as I am, if something goes wrong with me, I cannot cut myself. I have to go under anesthesia, and another surgeon, who may not be as good as I am, has to cut me. But in this case, the Lord knows, so we can submit. We can undergo the anesthesia of submission, because the Lord knows how to deliver us. Praise the Lord. We try to deliver ourselves and fail, but the Lord knows. He knows. Knowing this, the Apostle Paul in Romans says, knowing this, let's read it, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. He that is dead is freed from sin. So our problem is that we are not dead. He that is dead is freed from sin. Faith reckons self dead with and in Christ. Praise the Lord. That Christ being raised from the dead, death no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Now comes faith. This is what faith does. Likewise, reckon that the people in the world count to ten. Okay? The word reckon means count. We have to do what? We have to count ourselves dead. When they are counting to 20, we are to count ourselves dead. You see, I can count to 20, and after 20, you're still living. I can still shoot and cough and kill. But when you count yourself dead in Christ, and remain submitted, you're dead. Likewise, reckon ye yourselves also to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Romans 6, 6 to 13, and the key word there is to yield. Another word for surrender. Give up yourself to God, and the Holy Spirit gives you the power in your choice to obey. The means by which we can overcome the wicked one is that by which Christ overcame the power of the word. God does not control our minds without our consent. We are not robots. But if we desire to know and to do his will, his promises are ours. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. If any man willeth to do his will, he shall know of the teaching. John 8, 32, John 7, 17, revised version. Through faith in these promises, listen carefully, every man, every woman may be delivered from the snares of error and the control of sin. Hallelujah. Through what? Faith in these promises. Faith in the promises is faith in Jesus. Because Jesus is the living word contained in the written word. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Hallelujah. Mark 9.23. It is faith that connects us with heaven and brings us strength for coping with the powers of darkness. And remember, the Greek word virtue means moral strength. 
spiritual strength, moral excellence. In Christ, let's read this gem together. In Christ, God has provided means for subduing every evil trait and resisting every temptation, however strong. But many feel that they lack faith and therefore they remain away from Christ. Let these souls in their helpless unworthiness cast themselves upon the mercy of their compassionate Savior. Look not to self, but to Christ. He who healed the sick and cast out demons when he walked among men is still the same mighty Redeemer. So we have to keep our eyes fixed on Christ, his love, his victory, his salvation. How he was the eternal Son of God, became human, born of the Virgin, lived a sinless life in no sinful flesh, remaining submitted to his Father. And all that he did was for us and comes to us through the Holy Spirit. So we have to keep our eyes on Jesus by studying his word. He's still the same mighty redeemer today. Praise the Lord. And now this is, a, this is wonderful. Because so many people, so all of us, from time to time, waves of despair come over us. I don't know about you, but waves of despair come over me sometimes. Waves of despair. Listen to this piece of encouragement. Then grasp his promises as leaves from the tree of life. Him that come after me, I will in no wise cast out. John 6, 37. You hear that promise? You hear that promise? Him that come after me, I will in no wise cast out. As you come to him, believe that he accepts you because he has promised. Not because of what you have done, because of what he has done and his promise. Listen to this promise now. You can never perish while you do this. Never. Well, well, well. You can never perish while you do this. Never. When you believe that he accepts you because he's promised. And that promise is based on his already accomplished victory in his life and death. You can never perish while you depend completely on him. When, when I cast my helpless soul on the cross of Calvary, I can never perish. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He repeated the words that more than 1,400 years before, he had spoken to Israel in Deuteronomy. The Lord thy God led these, these 40 years in the wilderness, and he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Deuteronomy 8, 2 or 3. So it was the Son of God before the incarnation telling Moses that, and then when he became a human being, he experienced it and repeated it to us. That we are not to live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. In the wilderness... When all means of sustenance failed, God sent his people manna from heaven and a sufficient and constant supply was given. This provision was to teach them that while they trusted in God and walked in his ways, he would not forsake them. Hallelujah. The Savior now practiced the lesson he had taught to Israel. Imagine that. The same lesson he gave to Israel as the eternal son of God in heaven before he became man. Now as man, he practiced it. By the word of God, succor had been given to the Hebrew host. And by the same word, it would be given to Jesus. He awaited God's time to bring relief. He was in the wilderness in obedience to God. And he would not obtain food by following the suggestions of Satan. In the presence of the witnessing universe, he testified that it is a less calamity to suffer whatever may befall than to depart in any manner from the will of God. Wow, let us sink in. Let us sink in. It is a lesser calamity, whatever may befall, 
than to depart from the will of God. That's a solemn one. That's why we should go over and over until it sinks in and becomes our experience. It is a less calamity to suffer whatever may befall than to depart in any manner from the will of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Often the follower of Christ is brought where he cannot serve God and carry forward his worldly enterprises. You hear this? Perhaps it appears that obedience to some plain requirement of God will cut off his means of support. And Satan would make him believe that he must sacrifice his conscientious convictions. But the only thing in our world upon which we can rely is... Let me go, go it again for those who missed it. The only thing in our world upon which we can rely is... The word of God. Everybody following? Well, of course, the question everybody following is an obvious answer. No. We know that already people come to church. They listen. They don't follow. They, they dream. They sleep. All sorts of things. But I, I invite you to concentrate and follow. The only thing in our world upon which we can rely is the word of God. The word of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. Even in this life, it is not for all good to depart from the will of our Father in heaven. This is another beautiful one. This one that we used to remember from the early days. Let's look at it again. When we learn the power of his word, we shall not follow the suggestions of Satan in order to obtain food or to save our lives. Our only questions will be, what is God's command and what his promise? Knowing these, we shall obey the command and trust the promise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our only questions will be, what is God's command? What is God's promise? Knowing these, we shall obey the command and trust the promise. That's the Zervages 1 to 1. Old Testament lessons. The equivalent of the Hebrew word for virtue in the Old Testament means strength and power. For example, 2 Samuel twenty two forty, For thou hast girded me with strength to battle. Them that rose up against me thou hast subdued under me. The word strength there in the Hebrew is the Hebrew equivalent of the word virtue. So the word virtue means spiritual and moral strength in Jesus Christ. As David prayed for strength to defeat Israel's enemies, so we must pray for spiritual strength, a retail virtue, to overcome every defect of character, every enemy of righteousness. Remember what was applicable to Israel back then is now applicable to the church. Israel's enemies were the nations around. Our enemies are false doctrines and defects in us and all around. And we are to pray for victory to overcome. And Jesus will give us the strength. Spiritual moral strength is ours in Christ. He, by faith in his Father, won the victory over every temptation. And his faith and victory are ours to claim. Oh, praise the Lord. So these promises here, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Philippians 4.13 and 1 Peter 5.10 But the God of all grace who have called us into his eternal glory, unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Arete, virtue, spiritual strength in Jesus Christ. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savour of his knowledge by us, in every place. And of course we have these already. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Jesus says. I have overcome the world. John 16.33. And 1 Corinthians 
57 and 58. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So Christ has worked out the victory. The victory is a gift. God gives it to us. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor in, is not in vain in the Lord. This is your labor in the Lord. The labor in the Lord is different from the labor in yourself. The labor in the Lord is the labor which comes when you, by faith and submission, allow the Holy Spirit to energize and motivate you so that your obedience is spirit-led and spirit empowered as you submit and choose and decide. The path of sincerity and integrity is not a path free from obstruction. You heard that? But in every difficulty, we are to see a call to prayer. Another precious promise. In how many difficulties? In every difficulty, we are to see a call to prayer. There is no one living who has any power that he has not received from God. And the source whence it comes is open to the weakest human being. Praise the Lord. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, said Jesus, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you if shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. There's another wonderful promise. In my name, Christ bade his disciples pray. In Christ's name, his followers are to stand before God through the value of the sacrifice made for them, they are of value in the Lord's sight. Why are we of value in the Lord's sight? Because of the sacrifice made for us. Because of the imputed righteousness of Christ, they are counted precious. For Christ's sake, the Lord pardons those that fear him. He does not see in them the vileness of the sinner. He recognizes in them the likeness of his son in whom they believe. Praise the Lord. So, so long as we remain in Christ, God sees us not as we are in ourselves, but as we are in Christ. In fact, he sees Christ in us while he's still working on us. Praise the Lord. As A.T. John says, God as long as we keep our eyes on Christ, God keeps his eyes on the finished product. You heard that? As long as we abide in Christ, God keeps his eyes on the finished product. We are faulty now, but God knows how to deliver us, how to sanctify us, how to perfect us. If we leave ourselves in his hands, he will bring us off more than a conqueror. Praise the Lord. This is another wonderful promise. The Lord is disappointed when his people place a low estimate upon themselves. You heard that? He desires his chosen heritage to value themselves according to the price he has placed upon them. God wanted them, else he would not have sent his son on such an expensive errand to redeem them. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! He has use for them. And he is well pleased when they make the very highest demands upon him that they may glorify his name. You heard that? When we make the highest demands upon him, not for selfish gratification, but to glorify his name, he is well pleased. And this is another beautiful promise. They may expect large things if they have faith in his promises, oh, praise the Lord. But to pray in Christ's name means much. It means that we are to accept his character, manifest his spirit, and work his works. The Savior's promise is given on condition. If you love me, he says, keep my commandments. He saves men not in sin, but from sin. And those who love him will show their love by obedience, oh, praise the Lord. All true obedience comes from the heart. It was heart work with Christ. And if we consent, he will so identify himself with our thoughts and aims, so blend our hearts and minds into conformity to his will, that when obeying him, we shall be back carrying out 
our own impulses. What a victory is ours in Jesus Christ. Oh, praise the Lord. The will refined and sanctified will find its highest delight in doing his service. When we know God as it is our privilege to know him, our life will be a life of continual obedience. Through an appreciation of the character of Christ, through communion with God, sin will become hateful to us. So this is the important point here now. By praying, by studying, by deepening our intimate relationship with Christ, sin will become hateful to us. As Christ lived the law in humanity, so may we do if we, take, if we will take hold of the strong for strength. But we are not to place the responsibility of our duty upon others and wait for them to tell us what to do. We cannot depend for counsel upon humanity. The Lord will teach us our duty just as willingly as he will teach somebody else. If we come to him in faith, he will speak his mysteries to us personally. Our hearts will often burn within us as one draws nigh to commune with us as he did with Enoch. Hallelujah. Those who decide, this is another precious one from the old days. Those who decide to do nothing in any line that will displease God will know after presenting their case before him just what course to pursue. Hear that promise? Let's go look, look at it again. Those who decide to do nothing in any line that will displease God will know after presenting their case before him just what course to pursue. And they will receive not only wisdom but strength, a rete, virtue. Power for obedience, for service will be given, will be imparted to them as Christ has promised. Praise the Lord. What so other things was whatever was given to Christ, the all things to supply the need of fallen men was given to him as the head and representative of humanity. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. First John three twenty two, all of that deserve ages six six seven, six six eight. Praise the Lord. Closing text and closing gem. And there that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Galatians 5, 24 and 25. <clears throat> Likewise, reckon ye yourselves dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our closing gem. <clears throat> blessed, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. When trials come into our lives, when clouds darken the horizon, how ready we are to forget that Jesus is our Savior, that behind the clouds the sun of righteousness is shining. Praise the Lord. That angels are close beside us, preserving us from harm. I would say to the despairing, look and live. Hope thou in God, for on Calvary's cross, a complete sacrifice was offered for you. Jesus is the sinner's friend, the sinner's redeemer. Eternal joy, a life of undimmed happiness, awaits one who surrenders all to Christ. Look away from yourself to Jesus, who is pleading before the throne of God in your behalf. Listen to his words. Come unto me, and I will give you rest. Praise the Lord. Well, this is his promise. He will give us rest. He will give us spiritual strength. He will give us victory. So this is virtue part one. Virtue arete. Uh, next time uh, we look at virtue part two, I think uh, we'll switch from PowerPoint to handouts for the rest of the series. And uh, be sure of old time ways that don't undergo epileptic seizures. So, 
remember virtue, moral strength given to us in Jesus Christ. Add to your faith virtue by receiving the victory Christ has won for us. We started with Charles Wesley. We end with Charles Wesley, that great hymn, Oh, for a Thousand Towns, in one of the most sublime tunes as the senior choir brings that to us as we sing the praises of our Lord who came down to give us this victory, virtue, awaited. May God bless you as you listen to this rendition before our closing prayer.
Praise the Lord. Thank him for his word and the gospel and song that assembly need now as we close our service. <clears throat> oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you indeed for your word to us as we continued in Peter's ladder, adding virtue to faith. We've seen what virtue is in the Greek word arete, which means moral strength, spiritual strength to overcome worked out for us by Christ in Christ and given to us through your Holy Spirit by that faith which believes and surrenders all. Keep us in Christ. Grant that we shall go over these promises, learn them and practice them. And by keeping our eyes fixed on Christ, we know the promise is already given that the Spirit will cease not his work of conforming us to the image of our Redeemer. We thank you and we praise you. As things in the world get worse and worse, keep us firmly anchored in Christ and his truth and perfect our characters as we approach the final events. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. May God bless you real good as you continue to add and the Spirit multiplies in Peter's ladder. Amen.